Welcome to Beginning, Intermediate, and Advanced Playwriting, Advanced Playwriting, Lesson 3.4, Getting Unstuck, and The Play as an Energy System. It's not working, it's boring, it's not fun. This isn't going anywhere. Here is a checklist for getting unstuck. First, look at the beginning of the play. What is the problem you bring to the stage, and how big a problem is it? Is it big enough, important enough, and powerful enough to drive the play for two hours? Is it a specific problem that is affecting the character right before our eyes? Can the character do something about it right there on the stage? If the problem can only be discussed rather than acted upon, you might want to make adjustments. Does the play start right off? The tempo you set at the beginning for how quickly events unfold should set the story into motion at a clip that will seize the audience's attention. If you are bogging down, check the tempo and make sure it's moving at an engaging speed. The first person to be excited and engaged by the drama you are creating should be you. If the power and weight of the storyline is not enough to drive the story for the length of the play, the passion of the play may peter out before the ending. The solution is to go back and make sure that the overall plotline is of a size and weight to drive the play for its whole length. This is true on a smaller scale as well. If a scene is petering out before the ending, check to make sure that the plot point that sets this scene in motion and the problems compelling the characters during the scene are big enough to drive the scene for its whole length and they are not solved or ended without being replaced by more and even larger problems. Are the characters on stage at the beginning of the play involved in the play's main problem? Does it affect them personally? How much? Is it a life-changing amount? If a character is not personally engaged in the problem of the play, it will not drive him or her along. Check that all the characters are equally engaged by the problem of the play. If they are not engaged by the overall plotline, they need to have a problem of their own of equal power so that they are not upstaged by the main plotline. If one character in a play or scene has a weaker problem than another, then every time the action turns to that character, it will act as a built-in tension level bobble in the play. The energy of the story on stage will decrease when it's about the less interesting, less compelling problem. Scale up the story arcs of each character so that they can hold their own with all the others. If the tension level of the play has dropped, it may well have dropped for you, first of all. What personal problems do each of the characters set in motion when they come onto the stage? If you have a character who does not want anything, isn't planning anything, and doesn't care about the problems on the stage, rethink her and activate her so that she has an equivalent stake in the story. Activated characters add energy to the play. Check that all your characters are driving at least one plotline. The beginning of the play should cause your characters to do things or make decisions or initiate plans having to do with their biggest problem or the overall plotline or both. Check that at the end of the first scene your story is not in the same place or doing the same thing as when the story opened. The characters should be facing new decisions, not the same ones over again. Check for this for every scene. Check that every scene is driving the play forward. Check that each character is not doing the same action more than once, or at least not more than twice, and then it should have different results. Check that the climax of the first act brings the story to a whole new place. Look at your first act. If you cut the whole thing, would you miss anything really important going into the second act? Be merciless about this question. When your play is produced, this is not the first note you want to get from your director, and it is really not a critique you want to see in your reviews. If your dialogue is dragging, or if it isn't moving along, if you're having trouble figuring out what people are going to say, look at the tension level. When there is a significant tension level on stage, characters' utterances are obvious. Clara walks into the living room to find her brother dead on the floor. Oh, my God! Or... Bobby, are you all right? Or, oh no, not again, depending on your story. But the reaction of the character will be strong, and the words she says will be powerful and interesting. If, instead, Clara opens the door to find her brother Bobby has come over for a chat, it will be, hi, how are you, would you like a drink, and none of these words is a weapon for the characters to use against each other or themselves. None of them will have an effect on the audience. Drama is created by tension. Check your tension levels at every point in your play, because the audience's attention will drift away whenever it drops. 
check the tension level has been repeated over and over in these lessons, but it needs to be. Where there is tension, your actors will fly through the scene, and their passion will carry the audience with them. When the tension on stage drops, or is low or non-existent, the actors will carry the scene across time on their backs to the sound of the audience shuffling in their seats. This is miserable for everyone. It is a waste of your actors and your audience's time. The playwright can keep this from ever happening by setting a significant tension level. That is why this note cannot be repeated too often. Now this is not an advocation for you to always set a really high tension level all the time. That is for some kinds of plays, but certainly not for all plays. Shakespeare, in his lighter and most popular comedies, sets a tension level of four at the start of the play, holds it at four without ever raising or dropping it for two and a half hours, and then raises it to a seven at the end. Choose the tension level that best reflects what the story is about. But the definition of a tension level of four is one that seizes and holds the attention of every person in the audience. That is the absolute minimum. They all pay the same price to see the play. Don't let anyone go. If you are stuck in a scene that has tension but will not go forward, check that you are giving the move to the right character. A character makes a move which drives the scene forward. Another character reacts to the move and makes a move of her own. If you give the move to the wrong character, you may write for a ways and then get bogged down. Go back two or three moves and check that at each step you give the right move to the right character. Some characters drive the scenes and some characters ride events. If you have turned a rider into a driver, you may find that the problem is that they have run out of energy. To turn a rider into a driver, go back and activate them. Give them not just a stake in the action, but a plan. Turning a rider into a driver, giving them a move of their own to drive events, even for only a short time, allows you to get all the possible energy from that character. In addition, surprising the audience with an unexpected action adds energy to the play. Every character in your play is an energy unit, adding power to your play. A play is an energy system. It derives its energy from imbalance, from events being out of joint. These events work upon the characters in the story, cause them to take action to solve their problems, which causes further events to unfold. The actors take on this energy with all their passion. Actors have a huge amount of passion. To get the fullest possible energy out of the system you are creating with your play, make full use of each of your actor energy units. Make full use, too, of each of your plot points. The greatest power of an event on stage is not the event itself, but its fallout, what happens because of the plot point. So when something happens on stage, check that the fallout is fully paying off the event. The arc of play that happens because of an event needs to be in proportion with the size of that event. That is, if something big happens, it will take more playing time to pay it off. If something small happens, then it will only be a short time before you will need another plot point to keep the story in motion. If Wendy is told that her husband has died, then her fallout, her reaction, is going to last for a while. If she is able to move on in a short time, then you have a comedy rather than drama because the character's reaction is out of proportion. If she is told that her husband has broken his finger at work, her reaction will be much shorter, unless it is a comedy. Events that happen on stage in the present in front of the audience will create the most energy in the play. If your characters are talking about events that are off stage or in the past, then you are losing energy that you might otherwise be bringing onto the stage. Design your play and set it so that everything important in the story happens in front of the audience, especially if you have to be exceedingly clever to make that work. Everything you set up on stage creates potential energy and expectation. To get the full energy from this material, be sure and pay off everything you set up. Pay off each thing separately. If you pay off two things at the same time, then you are lessening the energy you get by paying off first one and then the other. Designing a play is not unlike setting up a fireworks show. Make sure you have enough fireworks to last the whole length of the show. Set everything up ahead of time and set off the fireworks one after the other so that just as the final sparks of one are raining down, the next one is heading for the sky. Don't leave your stage cold and dark with nothing about to happen. 2,500 years ago, Aeschylus, Sophocles, and Euripides were writing plays. 
Those plays are still produced today in many languages and in places the playwrights never dreamed of. That is the bar that we playwrights face. That is why we must make our plays thoroughly engaging at every moment, unendingly powerful and completely satisfying to the audience. To make it work this way, set a significant tension level from beginning to end and never let it drop for a moment. Make sure you have sufficient material to blow up the stage at regular intervals so that no one can look away or fall asleep. Design your story so that the second half is even more compelling than the first half. Don't waste a bit of any of the power that each of your actors can bring to the stage. A thoroughly used actor is a happy actor, and happy actors make the best theater. Design your climax to be powerful, memorable, and moving. Settle for nothing less. Make great theater. That's what playwrights are for. In our next lesson, we will discuss why write a play and getting a play into production. If you would like more information on playwriting, my manual, Playwriting, the Merciless Craft, Comprehensive Techniques for Mastering Beginning, Intermediate, and Advanced Playwriting, is available from Amazon as both an ebook or a paperback. If you have questions or comments, or are interested in a workshop or master's class, you can contact me through my website at thecarolwolf.com.